Hey, how's it going, everybody? I'm DJ Amakria, track him ENT, and yes, we have a real tutorial right now. Not that spin zeta weight tutorial. But anyways, <laughs> well, we're going to be talking about VU, you know, <clears throat> and VU metering, <clears throat> and, you know, just like your oscilloscope, which I'm going to go ahead and point to that, because I know a lot of people are going to wonder what the oscilloscope is, or at least this is what the oscilloscope looks like in FL Studio. And, and what is the direct relationships that it has and how can it, how it can help you with your mixing. So, you know, understanding these two things will actually end up making you probably one of the better uh, better engineers, music producers in general, because understanding the movement of your sound and what you're trying to, you know, what you're trying to achieve when creating a song, beat, or whatever, will actually make you far much better than the, than the average person as a music producer. So, now, now that we're actually talking about this VU, this VU meter, which means volume units, and, you know, and this particular one is free, and it's, on, it's available for download, just go to my playlist, free download Fridays, check it out, and you'll see the level meter or whatever. <clears throat> so, anyways... Like I was saying, I'm going to go to a less CPU hungry view because Windows 10 is tripping right now. It's, it's downloading something in the background and it's been messing my computer up all day. So now, now that we're actually talking about that and I'm actually looking at something, I don't know what the heck. It... What is that? But yeah. Oh my gosh, that's as cool as fudge. But anyways, <laughs> man, I hate getting all types. But yeah, so, you know, you actually can see like your actual relationship with this and this. And I'm just going to go ahead and play that with your waveform and your VU meter and your uh, telescope. So I just want you to pay attention to like how it's reading, you know, you see the red line, which is representing the peak, that the last peak that hit. And then this is re representing the natural waveforms that's going through the volume units uh, right now, or going through the VU meter. <clears throat> and look, just look at the peaks. Now, I just, you know, I'm just playing this track right now real quick, but the, the direct relationship between the waveform and that is that it's, it's letting you know that there is much air in the track for the, the track to be much as tight as possible during and, until until needed be to when it's, it's at its explosive parts, <clears throat> like such, like so. And also you can actually see how the, <clears throat> how this is mixed as well. As you can see, the top, the top peaks are, more prominent than lower peaks, that means that it was uh, mid to side, uh, mid to side EQing on those peaks, which I think it might be the kick drum. <laughs> okay. So you actually can see that you know this track has fairly decent and fairly you know fairly fairly subtle peaks and you also can see that the attack is very fast within what the what the way the compression was used and the release time you know it's just fair it's just kind of like maybe probably just mid you know and we're gonna get into that more into that because I'm gonna <clears throat> go and overall compress it and use the compressor, which it also has that particular has a VU meter on there. <clears throat> so I have another track, and like I said, you know th this particular these waveforms your, and your VU meter have a direct relationship with your studio monitors and speakers in general. So it, what you see right here is how your speakers are gonna be moving, uh, <clears throat> you know basically how your speakers move and how the frequencies will make your cones move so for those who didn't know that and i'm pretty sure a lot of people knew that anyways but that's a direct relationship <clears throat> so 
So we have more of uh, a more subtle track. Do you know this is uh, an uh, old track as well? Pay attention to how more aggressive this is versus the R&B track. Now, if you actually pay, paid attention to the VU meter, you actually see that there was not a lot of air in there at, at all. That, you know, it's pretty much wasn't, uh, the track didn't have no room to breathe uh, other than past, you know, f I guess what it was, negative five dB. Like it never really settled down to ne negative 20, meaning, you know, that, that it, you know, <clears throat> that it had a lot of stuff going on. And if you actually look at this waveform, it's a lot of stuff going on, you know, from the beginning. So, you know, that's that's basically just uh, you just letting you know, you know, if if that might have been it might, might not be the case of what you want in terms of your mix uh, that you, you might want to uh, tone that down. You know, when you might want to tone your your transients down. And, and make sure that, you know, you have enough room or you might want to just, you know, bring, make the release time a little faster on whatever you're using or, you know, just p so so that you can create that particular room for it now <clears throat> for for other transients to be heard because they might be either too cluttered, which. Now, you know, that's where the uh, uh, reading the oscilloscope, if you look at the oscilloscope. You actually can see, and you actually, even though you also can hear a little bit of the dis, uh, of the distortion and the clutterage of the track, as as you can see it visually as well, and then you can see it visually on here as well too that there was not enough room, no, not enough paper. It's okay. I mean, you know, I was maybe like nineteen or twenty when I made I made this. I had no true knowledge, you know, versus somebody else more professional that worked with that, that note that knew what he was doing and you can see the, the subtle differences within the mix <clears throat> and uh, how much sweeter that mix was even though you know they're two different totally different tracks you know it's all base knowledge there so you know playing this track in so I'm gonna oop, I'm gonna put my headphones on here And we're gonna really dig in. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to just say goodbye to that. Now, VU metering uh, actually, and this is one of the reasons why I buy a certain plugins versus not buying other plugins, regardless of what the hype is, because of the use of it, am I gonna get total use of it? So that this is why I I bought Hoser XT. Other, you know, because you know, one, you could do regular EQing, link EQing, and which is not linked. I don't know why it's not linked right now. <clears throat> no, I guess there we go. There she goes. Now, at, or versus stereo EQing, where I can, you know, EQ the left versus the right, do certain things, much much like the top track, Fresh Breath. Which, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was a dope song, but anyways, yeah, so you now we're actually going to look, go ahead and look at that. I'm going to make sure everything's fine. And now, now we're going to actually run this through the hose, uh, through hoser, which we're going to see if it actually colors it. So if you have your headphones on, check it out. Yeah, matter of fact, we're gonna not we're gonna have it off. 
and then I'm gonna turn it on and off so everybody can actually hear it. So pay attention to that. So all right, it's it's kind of care, it's kind of colored, it's kind of a model EQ. It really doesn't have like so, true subtle, like subtlety to it, like just running it flat or a signal through it. But. Actually, I take that back. You can actually hear how smooth, smooth like liquor. But yeah, you actually hear the smoothness of it. But yeah, just check, just paying attention to that. You actually see, you know, you know, from from certain judge points when you see VU metering or whatever, which is which this is going to be different from that when every when all the processes are done. This is your basic mix bus or master bus or whatever. Uh, chain so you know we're we're going to go and just play this in three uh, and we're going to adjust certain things So, you know, I'm just kind of just digging in and just changing a couple of things as such. Now, now what, what was what was done is <clears throat> off the VU meter and just just by ear because your ears remember again, once again, your ears, your your best tool in this type of situation is that, you know, you know, I wanted to roll out something of that unwanted bottom end, which I actually boosted instead of attenuated. <clears throat> And you know to get rid of some of that uh, the distortion, but I just want to give us give it a little bit more room in certain areas. <clears throat> but you know, actually looking at this, you know, you can actually tell the difference. Now, you know, I can actually, because that snare is a little much, but now, and I'm, I'm trying to cut it down. Now, I have another VU that is going to come up sometime soon, any day, or it should. I'm going to kill somebody if it doesn't. No, I'm not. And yeah, so I have a basic EQ, right? I mean, a basic uh, <clears throat> dynamic process processor, you know, just a basic compressor. And you know, you, you have your threshold, your ratio, and your response. Your response, you know, kind of be in your release time or whatever, you know, you can have it a fast response, a slow response or whatever. So we're gonna actually look at this VU meter. 
and you can see something. One of the biggest differences between this one, you see it's not moving as much. That's because it's because uh, there is what you call game reduction. And once you add the game reduction in there, uh, the threshold in there. You'll start seeing that the view start, starts moving or whatever, which could be kind of confusing. So you kind of could just, you know, pull this up at the same time. And, you know, just kind of make adjustments uh, <clears throat> with those, both of those up. 15, 4, 8. Holy crap. <laughs> uh oh. Oh, okay, cool. You know, now you can actually see how fast the compressor is actually moving, you know, using that as well, you know, and you actually can see it in here as well. See the how how slow it's moving in relationship. And for, for for the love of you, you know, if you actually paid attention to the actual volume, this track is already, you know, <clears throat> at a certain volume. So I would actually have to gun it in hose in hosers, seeing that that is, you know, I adjusted that gain for it to actually for that particular for that particular compressor to walk uh to work. <clears throat> so I'm trying to make it wobble so it sounds very unpleasant. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, sorry. I had it bypassed. Now you guys can hear the threshold being re being retardedly too much. Now, if you hear once you if you get to the if you get to the ratio like this, and you start hearing this, 
that means you have too much damn compression. So, you know, two to one, whatever, two to one. That is too, like, that's too much release. And then you have this. Mind you, you can actually see that in this uh, meter right here. <clears throat> I can't believe I had a bypass the whole time. I mean, by, wow, bypass, bypassed. But anyways, other than that stupidity of mine, that's that's pretty much how you read your VU metering and seeing, you know, you know how how it has a direct relationship, how you you know get your <clears throat> your overall mix to behave in such a manner that you want it to behave in. I am DJ McCree. I am such an idiot. Uh, but if you like this video, give it a like. If you have any comments, please leave a comment. And you know, this is your first time seeing a video by me. Check out all the videos by me in my playlist. I promise you, I do not just bypass a freaking important plugin and then, you know, active actives as I know what I'm doing. <clears throat> but yeah. I just wanted to see if I actually did in the hoser too. And I don't know. But anyways, this is your boy DJ McCree. Uh, thank you for your time and I'm out.